Hello and welcome to Controllers Tech. Few months ago I made a video covering WS2812 addressable LEDs. We used the timer PWM with DMA to send the data to the LEDs. That video is still one of the most appreciated videos I ever uploaded. While many of you made it work using that method, some of you still had problems with it. While for some the DMA callback wasn't being called, for others one or two LEDs were behaving inappropriately. Today we will cover yet another method of interfacing these addressable LEDs. Instead of PWM, we will use the SPI. We can achieve high board rates with SPI, and therefore we can match the bit timing required for the LEDs. Here is the original article that I took the reference from. You can read this, I will leave the link in the description. Here is the datasheet of the WS2812 addressable LED driver. We will directly jump to the timing section. Here are the bit timings for 0 and 1. To send a 0, we need to keep the signal high for 0.35 microseconds, and then low for 0.8 microseconds. And to send a 1, we need to keep it high for 0.7 microseconds, and low for 0.6 microseconds. The timing is flexible, and an error of 150 nanoseconds is acceptable here. The total time for a pulse, should be around 1.25 microseconds, with an error of 600 nanoseconds. We will use the SPI peripheral, with the baud rate of 2.5 megabits per second. This means that each bit will be transferred in 0.4 microseconds. If we want to transfer a 0, we can send a 1, followed by two 0 bits. We know that each bit is equivalent to 0.4 microseconds, so this bit sequence will keep the signal high for 0.4 microseconds, and then low for 0.8 microseconds. This is exactly what the requirement is. The WS2812 driver will see these three bits as a single zero bit. Similarly, to send a 1, we will send two 1 bits, followed by a zero bit. This will keep the signal high for 0.8 microseconds, and then low for 0.4 microseconds. This is not the exact, but an acceptable timing for the 1. The WS2812 driver will see these three bits as a single one bit. The period for the three bits is 1.2 microseconds, which is as per the requirement in the datasheet. We will discuss more things in this datasheet later, let's first open the IDE and create a new project. I am using the F446RE controller. Give some name to the project and click finish. Let's start with the clock. Bypass the clock as it is provided by the ST link itself. The board has 8 MHz crystal, and I am running it as the maximum possible, 180 MHz clock. Now go to the connectivity, and enable the SPI in half duplex mode. We only need to send the data, so half duplex mode is fine for us. Let's keep the data size as 8 bits, as we only need to send 3 bits. The data should be transferred as MSB first. Now we need to bring the board rate to 2.5 megabits per second. This setup doesn't allow me to do that. Let me reduce the main clock to 160 megahertz. All right here we have the 2.5 megabits. Make sure the clock polarity is low, and the clock phase is one edge. This is basically the SBI mode 0. Two pins got selected for the half duplex mode. We have the pin PA5 as the clock, and the pin PA7 as the data pin. We will connect the pin PA7 to the LED input. This is all the setup we need, click save to generate the project. We will create separate library files for the LED driver. So create a WS2812 header file in the include directory, and C file in the source directory. 
Let's start writing the code in the source file. Include the main file, and the WS2812 header file also. Define the number of LEDs being used. Also define an array to store the color data. Here I am defining a matrix array, which will store the three colors for the respective LED. Let's write a function to set the colors for the respective LED. The parameters of this function are the LED number, the red color code, the green code, and the blue code. These color codes should be in the RGB format. Here we will store the LED number in the first element of the matrix. Then store the green color in the second element, the red in the third, and the blue in the fourth. I am storing the green color first, this is because as per the datasheet, the green color byte is the most significant byte, then we have the red and at last the blue. Therefore it will be easier to extract the data later in the code. Now let's write another function to send the data through the SPI. The parameters are the color codes. Here we will first combine the three color bytes, and make a single 24-bit color data. In the beginning we discussed that each color bit will be equivalent of three SPI bits. We will store these three SPI bits in a single byte element. Since there are 24 color bits in total, let's create an array of 24 bytes. Also define an index variable to keep track of how many bytes have been occupied in the array. Now we will assign the SPI bits for each color bit, and store them in the array. We have to send the MSB first, therefore the extraction should start from the most significant position of the color data. We will first shift the color data by 23 places to the right, and extract the bit at that position. If the bit is a 1, we will store 110 in the first element of the array. Otherwise if the bit is a 0, we will store 100 in the array. Then the color data will be shifted by 22 places and we will extract the second bit from the end. Once all the bits from the color data have been extracted, we will send the array to the SBI. You can use interrupt, DMA, or the normal mode to send this data, it should work fine with all the methods. We need to define the SBI handler as an external variable. Let's write one more function which we will call from the main file, to send the data to the LEDs. Here we will call the for loop as many times as the number of LEDs we have, and each time we will send the data to the respective LED. The LED data array ensures that the previous data for the LEDs is saved, and if a single LED is updated, it doesn't affect the rest of them. Every time we update even a single LED, we have to send the data for all the LEDs. Also note that unlike what we did during the PWM tutorial, here we are sending the data for individual LEDs. This structure also reduces the memory requirement for the data array, and hence the code can be used on the lower end microcontrollers also. Alright let's define these functions in the WS2812 header file. We will define the set LED function, and the send function. Let's write the main file now. Include the WS2812 header file. In the main function, we will set all the LEDs to zero, to make sure they are off. In the while loop let's set all of them to red, and send the data to the LEDs. Give a delay of 1 second. Now set all LEDs to green, and send the data. Let's build and debug the code. Here you can see all the LEDs showing 3 colors after every 1 second. 
Let me add a breakpoint here. Alright we have hit the breakpoint, let's step over the send function. You can see all the LEDs are red. Let's put breakpoints after every send function. All the LEDs are green now. And now they are blue. So the code is working fine. I have already covered this topic, where we sent the data using the PWM. You can simply search for WS2812 on the website, and you can find it easily. This code also has the brightness feature, which you can implement in the similar manner. Anyway I will include the brightness in the final code before I upload it on the website. One more thing, we don't necessarily need to set all the LEDs every time. But we do need to send the data for all the LEDs. This is how the data gets shifted. The first 24 bits are used by the first LED, then the rest of the data is shifted to the next LED. This process goes as long as there is data remaining. To indicate that the data is finished, we need to pull the data line low for more than 50 microseconds. We haven't implemented this part yet. So after the data has been sent to all the LEDs, let's give a delay of 1 millisecond. To display some random color, we can use the RGB color code. Let me copy the RGB code of this color. And now I am setting the LED 0 with this code. After setting those, send the data to the driver. Let's comment out this part. Let's build and run this now. Here you can see the LED shows the same color. It might not be accurately visible in the camera. Here first we set all the LEDs to off, and then display single color on the LED 0. Let's set another color now. I am setting this to the LED 1. Let's build and run this now. Here you can see both the colors are being shown on the LED 0 and LED 1 respectively. So we were able to send the data to the LEDs using the SBI. I hope you understood the process. I will add the brightness to the library before uploading it. The details will be updated in the article as well. This is it for today. You can download the code from the link in the description. Leave comments in case of any doubt. Keep watching, and have a nice day ahead.